Hi guys, today I'm going to show you how you can utilize the observer to create serotic pulses. In case this concept is new to you, here's a short explanation. So serotic pulse is created by powering and depowering something in the same game tick. So both repeaters and comparators have the same delay, but the repeater would always update before the comparator. So we would power this block and the redstone line behind it, and then in the same game tick this piston is powered and this block is removed, so the redstone line in the back here would be depowered again. The most interesting use of serotic pulses is powering pistons. The piston would extract and start retracting once it's getting depowered. So in case of a sticky piston, this is a perfect way to move a block as fast as possible. So in the same game tick, the block would be moved from one location to the next. And this is for example useful if you want to build a fast farm uh, where piston movement is important. Or another use is you can serotic blocks inside of entities. For example, I could suffocate the villager. Um, by doing this. If we would try to power yeah, the piston with a normal pulse, obviously the religion would get pushed out. In case you want to know more about this concept and applications, I made a detailed tutorial a while ago that you can find in the video description. So the observer also creates a short pulse, but it's a lot longer compared to the serotic pulse, so it would create a two gametic pulse. So as you can see, it's a short pulse, the sticky piston loses the block, but the yeah, villager gets moved out of the way. But we can use the observer in combination uh, with other blocks to create serotic pulses. So the first concept involves a 4 game tick pulse, which is created with this monostable right here. We would power this piston here, which pushes the observer block in that position. That takes two game ticks, and then the observer also has a two game tick delay. So basically after four game ticks, we would retract the block again when the observer starts powering this block here. And then it instantly gets retracted in the same game tick. And for example, the sticky piston here would be depowered again. And we created a serotic pulse. You might have noticed this additional piston here on top. It's to create block event delay. So yeah, block event delay makes this possible. For example, this piston here at the bottom would also be uh, powered by quasi-connectivity. But it wouldn't extend because it doesn't have enough uh, block event delay. I could um, add another piston right here and make an update chain. And now both those pistons would extract if that's what you want, for example. The next method uses a short pulse. So we power this sticky piston here with a two game tick pulse coming from this observer here. The observer will be pushed in this position right here, powering that block. And then the threadstone dust line is powered. And yeah, in turn, this piston would be powered. And also the observer will be pushed out of the way because we powered this piston right here. And as you can see here, we also need some block event delay because it could happen that this piston would activate before that piston if you would power it directly and then this piston wouldn't be activated. So I guess I'll just show it to you. And also what would happen if we would try to power this piston directly. So then the piston over there doesn't get powered, but for example, a fence gate or a trapdoor would be activated. You can hear that. And you can see it, yeah. But that's why you need the block event delay by creating this update chain. This design was shown to me by at example. So here we power this redstone dust line, which the observer detects. And yeah, since he has a two game tick delay, he would start powering off the two game ticks. But also after two game ticks, we would push the observer out of the way. So we, this redstone line here would be powered and depowered in the same game tick. Also note that we're using a comparator right here and a repeater here. Since the comparator um, has a lower update priority, so the repeater would update first. And you can see it's also a dual edge design. So if you would swap the repeater and the comparator, then it wouldn't work. The last design I'll show you involves the update order of observers. So like the comparators, observers always update after repeaters. So this is pretty much the first sign I showed you. We just replaced the comparator with the observer right here. If you would replace this repeater here with a comparator, then it would sometimes work, but not always. So it would be locational. And this is pretty much the same concept just build it up differently, and it's probably one of the most compact ways to create a serotic pulse. So thanks a lot for watching, have a nice day, bye bye!